بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد وهبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty blesses us all with علم نافع ورزق طيبة وعمل متقبلا and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all for our sins bless us with ikhlas with the bad على سنة النبي صلى الله عليه because this is what's going to benefit us. Ahabatifillah, it was called to my attention, and I'm the least worthy of really speaking about some of these topics, but I have devoted a significant portion of my, my life and my Islamic studies to some of these topics. So it was brought to me by some of our fudala the statements of a popular YouTuber, which is, this is kind of the, the new trend is we have so many social media influencers speaking about Islam. And as Ibn al-Qayyim mentions about those who, you know, that the half, the, the, you basically that you would not want a doctor that is half studied half a tabib, half half of this to, to operate on you. Likewise, we don't need half scholars, people who never study with the ulama, people who are not known to Ahlul Sunnah, speaking about ittiqada Ahlul Sunnah, speaking about as they are as if they are a reference because they have a kathrata mutabi'un, you know, they have so many uh, followers, then feel they have license to speak about major Messiah al din These are not light issues. And even I wouldn't even begin to be speaking about these issues if I didn't feel that there was some sort of obligation upon myself to share the studies and the works that I have done and come across in regards to this very, very important, sensitive topic. And we have to realize that this is one of the great fitness and trials of this time. That is the arise of groups like Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, all these takfiri groups. Another angle is the rise of so many people speaking about Allah Azza wa Jal's deen with no shame. They take and adhere to that which is shad, you know, akwal, you know, statements that you might even have from some, from an uh, an imam of the sunnah in the past, or a immata sunnah from the past. But as we'll see during the course of our discussion, that that is not what you call in Islam a hujjah. And it is not befitting for the talib al-ilm, the student of knowledge, or the tawailib al-ilm, the small, minuscule student of knowledge, to bring up these kind of issues and be a source of fawda. And we're going to show you why that these people are not from Ahl sunnah wal jamaah Hadha laysa min minhaja Ahl sunnah abadan. It has nothing to do with the madhab of the salaf ever, never, these kind of statements. For example, the person who says, well, Ibn Hazm said, you know, music is okay, or certain types of music. You know, we call this uh, that this person is following a goal which is shav, meaning no one else accepted it. And it is a super, it's not even a, a valid opinion, really, when it goes to the Nasus. Because we're ordered as Muslims to follow what? Kitab was Sunnah. And as the scholars mention what? What are the maratib al-dalil? The scholars mention the masadir al-Islam, you know, or the master of Islam, the, the source of Islam is the Quran, is the sunnah, is the ijma. And the ijma even has some variations, interpretation of what we mean by ijma, the consensus. But we were referring to, as many of the Salaf did, the ijma of the Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala and ijma'in. And then, 
we have analogy or chaos as some of the scholars and and those are intricate uh, issues of a soul effect, which is outside of the scope of our discussion. And we're going to do our best to try to keep this topic as brief. For those who don't want to listen, I will just suffice to say that during the course of this discussion, if you will, we will talk about uh, a few important concepts with regards to the Shabbat that's being spread by some of these people. And in general, what we find is people who speak about these issues and bring up topics and try to wiggle through important usul al-i'tiqad, because this is the foundation principle. This is why you find this in the books of creed, this issue of rebelling against the leader. So our topic we'll be discussing, and that one of the brothers, and in fact, it's not him, it's many. Many, even some that you call Sheikh so-and-so. I've seen them on YouTube. I've had personal discussions with some of the brothers. And it's a travesty. It's a travesty that they are calling to Islam and this important asl, min usul al-i'tiqada ahl sunnah that they akhta fi. And la yanbari. This is not permissible, not acceptable in this time. It's been done. The ulama sunnah throughout time have dealt with this issue. Khalas. Lie, Jews, Abedin. It's not permissible ever, and I'm saying this with all certainty, based on the Quran and Sunnah. Okay, and how many of the Salaf were were reading him, and later who nakala ijma and hada? They said ijma. So we don't look to even if we have examples, and we're going to deal with that in detail. So during the course of this talk, we'll talk about how some of the Salaf, yes, they rebelled. We call that ijtihad. And also, we call that a khata, a mistake. Because it goes against the usul. It goes against the foundation. And it doesn't matter who says that. Even if he was a great imam of the sunnah, we preserve his honor and we rud his akhta. And we refute his mistakes. We, not meaning me, meaning the ulama of the sunnah throughout history. So for someone to come in this contemporary time and all of a sudden make this unknown people, social media people, thousand follower people on Facebook and all these other platforms, to then come and say and dig up things to cause doubt with the community, because that's all it is, is spreading a type of doubt. You can't have, there's no good in that, because men sabaka be had a cold. That's one of the things we have to look at. Who preceded you in that statement? Not just in your the position, but the way that you're articulated, especially in this time. In this time, the only people who, who preceded bringing up these kind of issues and bringing up the shaduth, and this is from my studies, at least four to ten years on this, this topic and others. I found two people in general. One, one of two, perhaps three. The first is the one, is the Khwarij, okay? I have direct Nusus, maybe we'll introduce it. I don't, for the sake of time, actual statements of Abu Hamza Misri, because this is where at first, I didn't even really have that much knowledge of history. And Abu Hamza Misri, a takfiri, mentioned this. So it caused me to go back to the sources and go back to the scholars and ask them for clarification. The second type of person is also the progressive. I've also read this with my own, and you, it's in my PhD thesis, which ta'ala, hopefully will be published soon. The progressive, those people who literally have, some of them have nothing left of Islam but their name because they go back to Bob Marley, and I'm not lying. Maybe I'll bring some of the quotes. Bob Dylan, for those who may or may not know Bob Dylan, uh, then they'll intermix Ali ibn Abi Talib and, and some you know, uh, Sufi poets and others, you know, they're all over. It doesn't matter you're a Muslim or not, you're a Buddhist, you're a monk. We just want wisdom. And those are, those are divine inspirational sources. So they also make the claim. But their claim is different about rebelling against the leaders. They say that all of those, they basically negate Sahih Muslim and, and the authentic ahadith. So they don't even accept ahadith. 
So this is their wedge. So they just have kofar from the left, the right, up and down. It's and even behind their back, kofar is just engulf, engulfing them. Immer they're immersed and drowning in kofar, and a destruction of the usul of uh, of Islam. You know. Then, the third category of person that I've witnessed are those people who may have, in general. Uh, the Itikad of Ahl Sunnah, but perhaps I don't know if it's the scholars that he studied with or they didn't study with scholars, but it's almost they negate everything. You know, they have sometimes prejudice, especially against Saudi ulama, Yemeni ulama, and others. I don't know where they come up with this, but I we can go around the globe Somali, so, uh, uh, Indonesian, Ethiopian. Um, uh, scholars, you know, of course, Saudi, Yemen, it, it doesn't matter. You can go anywhere that, that I'm talking about from Ahl Sunnah. You will never hear this kind of statement. Algeria, you will never hear this from scholars of Ahl Sunnah. The last doubt that I hope that we're able to uh, tackle or deal with or discuss is dealing with the connection that some of the people of ignorance and the extreme tech fides, because this is exactly what ISIS claims, that the menhaj of Muhammad ibn the Wahhab is actually the menhaj of ISIS. Okay, we, we hope to at least touch on this topic, which is, these are topics that are books have written about. These are like major topics. These aren't things you just make a five minute video or 10 or an hour long video. These are intricate topics. And I, you know, I'm going to do the best that I can to try to deliver some justice to the topic. But I know there will be no justice to the topic, but we'll just at least touch on it and try to give somewhat of a khalasa to qol. So the first issue, Ahabat al <clears throat> is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to follow those charge and authority over us. That, that's a command from your Lord. The one who subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So that means the reason that we're created is to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not to serve our desires, not to serve men, not to serve our jama'at, our groups, not to serve uh, anyone or anything created. but rather to serve Allah only. The one who created you had a haq, haqahu. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right. So it's his right that you do not speak about his religion without the authority to do so. And it's his right subhanahu wa ta'ala that you stick with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. Allah wa Jal says, Fikitab al-Kareem, Ya yuladina amanu wa'atiyu Allah wa'atiyu rasul. The one who we're, we're ordered to follow and, and worship totally, and we're going to get to that with regards to this ayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ladina amanu Allah wa rasul. O you who believe, obey Allah and his bay as messenger. I don't think we we don't have a disagreement even with those people who negate the sunnah and those progressives that we mentioned. We don't disagree at least left the end as far as the on our tongue. As far as our practice, absolutely we differ. And this is the difference between Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Bid'ah. And along with Ahl Bid'ah, I'm talking about also we're going to include Ahl Shadh. Ahla Shadud, the people who take these really strange uh, viewpoints that may have been a, a thick principle, okay? For example, to take the opinion that even some of the great imams, a few, well, Ibn Hazm, I, and I, and and one of the uh, four of Fuqaha, and I can't recall if it's Imam Shafi or Imam Malik, who says that you can see Rahimah Allah Jami'an, a woman, when you know, to see madha dhahra minha, or or what is when when you want to propose to a woman, you can see her naked even, if that's what it's going to take you to, entice you to marriage. We call that a kol shad. We call that a a a opinion which is 
not to be considered. It's not even a recognizable opinion. It absolutely is, uh, you know, although even if a great imam of the sunnah said it, it is not, it goes against what we're ordered to follow. This is a, we can't even really hardly even call it a minority opinion, but there's probably a better way to articulate shad, but I think the general uh, main meaning has been conveyed. So that means we are ordered to follow, uh, obey Allah and his messenger, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayat, Ya ladina amanu, ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasul. Obey Allah and obey his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That's what you're ordered to do as a Muslim. Okay? That also means, a fillah, that that's our master of the, of the faith. Because we have so many other nusuls and that's what the, the Muslims uh, understand. The ulama of all the madhahib, they understand this. Even the people of Ahl Bidah mostly, they, they generally understand that. They understand that. They will even make that in claim, at least... At least as far as left the end on their tongue and so forth. It depends on how extreme they are and so forth. But everyone understands that we go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. The extreme Sufis that worship the graves, make tawaf around the graves, they say, yeah, we, we're Ahlul Sunnah to Jama'ah. You'll see that. That's what they claim. And you'll see that from the extreme Khawarij and Tekfiris. Yeah, we're Ahlul Sunnah to Jama'ah. You'll also see that from uh, the... People, the followers of the Madhab of the Salaf, the Salafiyun in this contemporary time, they say we're Ahl Sunnah. And they are Ahl Sunnah. But that's another story. So, we're ordered to follow Allah and His Messenger. That's the Masdara of the religion. That goes back to the, the Masdara of the faith that we mentioned. We said Kitab, the Sunnah, uh, and the Ijma, the consensus. And we're going to talk about that shortly. And then, as some of the ulama they mentioned, and then uh, Qiyas being the fourth. Maratiba Dalil. These are levels of evidence. So that means we do not take as evidence. <laughs> we don't take as evidence for our religion. Now, of course, there's Ijtihad. We're not closing that door. But we don't go and take the Ijtihadat of an Imam or a Imma. Some Imams that contradict. That masadir, that that that, that that foundation, which means the Quran, the Sunnah, and the understanding of the Salah. Because some will say, yeah, we know that you shouldn't make khuruj, but we have some great imams, they made khuruj. This is exactly what Abu Hamza said, the tekfiri. And this is what other people say too, who may or may not be tekfiri. They may not be card-carrying tekfiris, but they may have the sifat of the tekfiris. Or, as I said, they could be the progressives. Modernist, or they could be somewhere in between where they maybe they just don't have that much knowledge about the issue and they shouldn't be speaking about it and they shouldn't be letting their hoa because I had a discussion with somebody who people everyone says sheikh 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 and it surprised me I believe he has much more knowledge than I do but he made a severe akhta and when I asked him and we had our emotional discussion he just said no I'm not taking it back he didn't give me he couldn't come with any hujja he gave me no hujja and I gave him a plethora of dalil, min kitab, min sunnah, min faham asalaf, and he didn't give me any hujja. So a lot of times it's hoa. So they might be, I don't know where, where a person like that fits in, but it just goes to show you, as the Prophet ﷺ said, if tarakat al yahud ala ita wa sab'in firqa, if tarakat al nasara ala ita natain wa sab'in firqa, wa if sataftariku hadi umala talata wa sab'in firqa, kullaha fin nara wahida. The Prophet ﷺ said the Jews break into 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my um into 73 sects, all of them in the fire, illa wahida, except one. Qil, man hiya ya Rasulullah. So the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and Ijma'in that were present, they said, who are they ya Rasulullah? He said, those are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. That shows us that we have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And it shows us that the Ummah of Muhammad ﷺ would divide into groups and sects. They might not all be card-carrying members, but they will still have the sifat, sifat of Ahl bidah from other groups and sects. So you don't have to be a card-carrying member of, for example, the jama'at of Akhwan Muslimin, but maybe you have an Akhwani Minhaj. Your methodology of understanding Islam or how you practice and implement da'wah is Akhwani. Okay? And so on and so forth. So going back to this important nas, uh, another thing I want to derive from that hadith, which is very important because it, it relates to our discussion, is that also 
we see that, and this is what Shaykh al-Salam ibn Taymiyyah mentions in regard to this hadith, the hadith of iftiraq, you know, the splitting, that this is where the name of what is known as the saved sect, the firqa to najia, okay? That those are one of the legitimate names that Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah has called themselves throughout history, whether they called themselves Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, whether they were referred to the Salaf al Salih, those first three generations, whether they were referred to as Ahla Hadith or Ahla Athar. And in contemporary times, a lot of our scholars refer to uh, themselves uh, and Ahla Sunnah as uh, the Salafiyun, okay, or Salafi or what have you. All of those names differ from the people of Bid'ah. How can you say such a bold claim? I say such a bold claim because, because when we look at those other jama'at, for example, Ashidi, Matridiyah, let's just take those two, or Jahmiya, they go back to their imam. Jahmiya is who? Jaham ibn Safwan, okay? Ashidis go back to who? Imam Abu Hassan al Ashari. Maturidiyah go back to who? Abu Mansur al Maturidi. They go back to that group. Even the people who adhere to those groups, especially the latter two, they will actually say, yes, we are Ashari with pride. Why would you, why would you not call yourself Umar ibn Khattabi or Abu Bakri or Sadiqi because you were going back to Abu Bakr Sadiq who is Afdal minhum bi kathir? You can't compare. Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in and their madhab is the madhab of the salaf. The sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in are the ru'us of salaf. They're the heads of the salaf. You say you want to follow the salaf. It means in the consensus we're talking about the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in then those who follow them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem wa sabaquna al-awwalun min al-muhajirin wal-ansar wa ladhina tabahum bi ihsan Allah Azza wa Jal. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he's pleased with them and they are pleased with him. That's Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah. That's the minhaj of the Salaf. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Asabakun wa awalun min al-mahajirina wa al-insar. He said, those who preceded, you know, from the earliest group, meaning Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala in Majma'in, especially in this ummah, min al-mahajirina wa al-insar. So there he gets it. It's muqayyid now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us exactly who he's talking about from the Sahabakun. Al-Muhajirin wal Ansar. Who are the Muhajirin wal Ansar? Those who made Hijrah from Mecca to Medina. This is going to be a long sitting, I see already. I'm sorry. And then those who met, you know, Ahl Medina who accepted them. And that's a red al Shia, Rafida wa Ghayrihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, and those who followed them in Ihsan. So that's what the, this is giving us what our religion is based on. I have to establish this. I'm sorry, because it, this is so relevant to what we're going to talk about. You, you can't, you can't just cut into this. It, it has to have this. I have to lead you into this because you, you're going to need to see when you're dealing with Shubhat, because those are doubtful things. The guy sounds so articulate, this, this, this youngster who was, Talking a lot of stuff. He sounded so nice. I think he's an Arab kid because you could tell by his, his language, it seems to me. I don't know if he studied. Hopefully so, because I wouldn't want to be speaking about major Messiah like that. And I didn't study Islam. I didn't sit at the feet of the scholars. Because what he's saying is not like anything I've heard from any of the Mashaikh al Sunnah. And like I said, I've met Mashaikh from all of those places I mentioned before, whether that be... Uh, Various countries. So many in Yemen, I sat under their beards. Never heard anything that even approached this. And they're not scholars for dollars or government. They don't have any money. And their Yemen is was supposedly a semi-democratic society. So everybody could speak. Even the Tekfiris had a lot of power at one point because the government is a weak central government. So they're not scholars under their control. And they had the same medhab of our imams of the Sunnah in Saudi Arabia and our Imam 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 Al Albani and all of our Ulama Sunnah in this time, women Qabil.
hadith and qadim, qadim and hadith in the past up to now. Okay, that this is the the you know you're going to find exceptions, and again we're going to talk about those uh, exceptions. So again, we we just want to establish this base that we have to know where we go back when we talk about issues in the deen. Because we're not going to just, this is a very important qaida from the Salaf. They say, لا يورف الحق برجال ولكن يورف الرجال بالحق كما قيل. They say, which means, and you'll find different, you'll find it articulated in different ways in some of the classical books as well as the contemporary books, maybe if they're paraphrasing it or what have you, which means that the truth is not known by men. Think about that. We don't say Sheikh so and so said that. That's like a hukum shari, and that is the um, it's wajib for you, and it's you must follow it. And you know he made a fatwa on this. It's wahi la. It's not a nas. That is not nasus. That is not what's called dalil in Islam. The fuqaha. This is what we what the fuqaha articulate for us. That's not called dalil. Dalil is, as we said, as Imam uh, Ibn al-Qaim says, قَالَ اللَّهُ قَالَ رَسُولُ الْعِلْمُ قَالَ اللَّهُ قَالَ رَسُولُ The knowledge, ilm al-nafi'ah, is Allah said and His Messenger said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, going back to this, this, this ather, that we don't know the truth by men, but we know the men by truth. Meaning, we put, why do we love those imams of the sunnah in the past up until now? We love particular imams because of their adherence to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu That's it. And that's really Al-Wala'u al bara That's a whole nother door we're not going to open up. But that's really loving for the sake of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala and detesting for the sake. We, that's why we don't like the scholars of Bid'ah. It's because of their bud on the Sunnah. Their, their distance from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu So, that means the truth is not restricted to men. So even if you have a few ethar of the Salaf or whatever, say if you had a hundred ethar, or say if a hundred from the Salaf went out and made khuruj, because there, there were from the Salaf who made khuruj, from the tabi'un, tabi'een, with tabi'een and, and, and others throughout history. That's not called dalil in Islam. In the shar, it's not called dalil. That ijtihad is not ghayr maqbool. It's not accepted. And there's other reasons for that, but it's still, it's just not, you can't follow that. You can't use that as the legal say, well, some of the Salaf did it. I think I'll do that. What about the Sahaba? What about the, uh, the, you know, what about what Allah said in his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa Why do so many of the ulama sunnah make, uh, refer to it as ijma? So, going back to the ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he, 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 uh, he, he, he said the original ayat, Ya ladina amanu, atiyullaha wa atiyur rasul. O you who believe, obey Allah and obey His Messenger. The scholars, they mention about this, that this is called ta'a mutlaq. Meaning that this is unrestricted ta'a. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, aqimu salat, establish the prayer, that's unambiguous. Al-Amr Yufidu Wujud, it's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so it shows that it's an it's a an obligation unless there is dalil to show that it is not obligation, which there is none. We know it's wajib to pray. And we know it's wujub from Allah Azza wa Jal. What Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Have a thought mutlaqin, meaning there's no debate. You can't argue, you can't say, well, Imam Shafi'i said, uh, Imam Ahmed said. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, La, you can't, you don't have a wajj, it's, it's done, it's finished. That is ta'a mutlaq. We obey those nasus from the book and the sunnah. That's doors closed. There's no ijtihad imam uh, al-nas. Uh, okay, There's no ijtihad, there's no reasoning and going when, when you have a clear text. You can't, you know, and it and and also ijtihad yus nas that it, it contradicts the nas and it goes in. You know, this is unacceptable. And let me give you an issue of ijtihad of some of the greatest of the ummah. Let's look at Abu Huraira radiAllahu taala in the hadith about wudu, uh, in which he said, "Wasmatu uh, Khalili sallallahu alaihi wasallam yaqul." And he mentions about uh, though about making wudu. Uh, 
إن الأمة يدعون يوم القيامة من أثر الوضوء فمن استطاع مهاجلين من من أثر الوضوء فمن استطاع منكم أن يطيل أثره فليفعل so Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه mentions this hadith رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he narrates this in which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to him that verily my ummah will be raised up by uh, in, in the, the signs of light from the places of wudu in which they think. So for example, your face and the, your hands and your arms. And whoever from amongst you is able to increase it, then do so. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala in another narration, it mentions that he used to and he didn't do this always out in front of the people, but from his itch he had, because he wanted this ajr, not out of bid'ah, not because he thought he was better, not because, but it was his itch he had with that nas. So he used to make it up to ila munkebe, you know, up to his like his shoulders. From his itch he had. Do we follow that? No, because we don't have any delil for that being. But the scholars they have discussion about that. But regardless of that, the point is, is we go with the nasus. All the nasus that show where the Prophet Sallallahu stopped his wudu and, you know, from the book and the sunnah. So then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says in that ayat, So, يَا لَذِينَ آمَنُوا عَطِيُ اللَّهُ وَعَطِيُ So if you're from the people of belief, you obey Allah and obey His Messenger. And then he said, يَا لَذِينَ آمَنُوا عَطِيُ اللَّهُ وَعَطِيُ رَسُولُ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Allah Azza wa Jal here is saying, Obey Allah and obey His Messenger, and those charged in authority from amongst you. This is the leader, and the scholars mention it's the leaders and the the uh, ulama. And then he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرَدُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ The fact that we have تَنَزَعْ We تَنَزِعُ That we, we're having this discussion and we're having a difference, we have to return it back to Allah and His Messenger. So you get, you understand the logic. It's going back to Allah Rasul. It's going back to the Quran and the Sunnah. That's the asal of the deen. So if the Prophet Sallallahu didn't give you any excuses to rebel unless it's open kufr, then you need to stop there and keep silent. And look how the Salaf, a mu'min, yani, and, and, and also there's ijma, kathir minhum nakla ijma, and we're going to talk about how that, you know, that's, there's a development in that process. Keep silent. It's not difficult. So, when we look at that part of the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْتِي رُسُولُ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ And those charged in authority over you, the scholars mention that that is ta'a muqayyid. That means that is restricted ta'a. It is restricted to what? To the leader's obedience to Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Allah Rasul, sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. There's no discussion about obedience to them. Khalas. This is what Islam is. Allah Rasul. We obey Allah and His Messenger uh, unrestrictedly, or what do we say? Uh, when you say you have love for someone unconditionally, we have unconditional obedience to Allah and His Messenger. As far as the leaders and the ulama, that obedience to them is restricted. It's mushtarat, you know, it has a, a condition. And what's that condition? Is that it is in accordance with Allah wa Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if it is not, for the sake of this, keeping the discussion a little bit shorter, is that we don't obey them in that command of disobedience. And this is where we differ with the Takfiris and the Khwarij. The Takfiris and the Khwarij will say, hey, we like those same texts, but we understand it to mean that no longer do we have to be obedient to the ruler. The ruler said, drink alcohol. That's uh, disobedience to Allah. We no longer gonna obey him in anything. So they negate all the ta'at. That's a khata. That's what the Ahla Bid'ah and Ahla uh, the takfir, the people of Khawarij and so forth. Ahlul Sunnah says, La, we say don't obey him in that. In that command of disobedience. But still you have to obey him. He's still, as long as he is still a Muslim. Okay, and then there's other conditions for rebellion, which we're not even going to talk about 
during this as well. But that's for rebelling against the leader whose kufr is open and, you know, the conditions of tekfir are in place and the mu'ana of tekfir are not there. The impediments to tekfir are not there. That's for ahla hilwa al that's for the people of knowledge and the people of manzil and the people of, you know, who have a responsible for making hukum, like not a guy who lives in the UK or some guy in Australia or some guy in Washington who's making a hukum, you know, like these tekfiris. They just make scholars everywhere, you know, with scholars without an So, so we see that, that the obedience to the leader is restricted. It's conditional. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the obedience to Allah and his messenger is unconditional. That is the source of the religion. That's where we go back. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so when we disagree about some, something, return it back to Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's where we have to return back to the book and the sunnah when we, we talk about that. That's the asl. That's where we go. Because that's what's delil is. That's evidence. No one else is evidence. Their qawl in and of itself is not delil. Unless it's muafiqa with kitab wa sunnah. طيب. So, moving on, there are so many ahadith of Rasulullah, and I think it, you know, I don't know if it's worth going into all the the evidences, but for example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet والسلام, said, Hear and obey the Muslim leader in those things which you love and what you hate as long as he doesn't call you to disobedience to Allah and if he calls you to disobedience to Allah then there's no hearing and there's no obeying okay so many ahadith in Sahih Muslim it's just a, kathra, a plethora of ahadith for example uh, <clears throat> the Prophet ﷺ said obey the one who will be given the bay'ah first fulfill their uh, fulfill their rights for Allah will ask them about any shortcomings and ruling over their subjects whom Allah has placed under them. So we see that what? That we have to obey them. We have to obey the rulers. And it shows that they will have shortcomings. They will be oppressive. But the Prophet ﷺ did not indicate for us that we should rebel against them. And when he was asked, why would you, why do we even need to ask these questions? This is what frustrates me. Why are we still asking the same ridiculous questions? And how is it some pupil in the West is going to come up with this nonsense? Come on. Kitab al-Sunnah is in front of your face. If you believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment, if that's what you believe in, then you better get back and, and go back to the Quran and the Sunnah and quit playing. We're tired of this nonsense. Every day, jeel after jeel, new tekfiri rises, a new ISIS comes up, a new Al-Qaeda, a new Boko, a new... Yeah, come on. Wake up. Wake up. Especially if you're a person of intellect. You're a person of intellect and you studied something, you know, studied with the ulama sunnah. And men sabaka bihaya the qawl in this asr. Who in the world preceded you in this time with that statement? That's from Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. Tell me the, the imam that, sab that preceded you. Because I would fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I wouldn't want to be some toilet al -im somewhere in the West with YouTube followers and stuff like this. Saying stuff, talking out of my ears and my no nostrils. With uh, going back to the books myself, tell me who preceded you in this stuff and brought this stuff up to, to attention. Illa a khawarij, except for the tekfiris in this time. I don't know. And the progressives. Which one are you? That's ridiculous. So return it back to Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So many hadith. So I don't know. I don't think we need to go there because I think some of these people are aware of that. But... I don't know why they, they bring these things up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is a resemblance to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kinim in, in Surah uh, Ali Imran, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, huwa ladhi anzala alaykum kitab, minhu ayatu muhkamatu hunna ummul kitab wa ukhra mutashabihad, fama ladhina fi qalubihim zaygun fa yattabi'una ma tashabaha min Allah 
So Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in Surah Ali Imran about those people who follow the 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 ambiguous verses. You know, because there's things that are muhkam. And really, when you have a consensus of Ahl Sunnah about these issues, you know, you find it all in the Kutub, Kut, the books of Creed, and that this has become a foundation principle of Ahl Sunnah Tiwil Jama'ah. And the ayats are there are muhkam. Then the mas'ala is muhkam. There's no, you don't need to come up with a new shubahat. For though, except for those who's in their hearts is a disease. They're, they're misguided. They're deviant. But yet, they follow that which is unambiguous. They look for a way out. They look for a way to revive the mas'ala. Now, if you're doing it from a point of elm, you shouldn't be doing it on social media. You should be doing that in a paper, academic paper, discussing it, and then showing them what Ahl Sunnah is upon. And not talking about the scholars of Ahl Sunnah and not belittling Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab and saying that he's a tekfiri or saying that he's like, he's the father of ISIS and all this other nonsense. That's exactly what the disbelievers say. But then they go further and they say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the father of ISIS. This is what they say. So you're just, a, you're, you're steps behind them. They're just, they just go to the level of kufr, you just go to the level of bid'ah. So what's important to Habit Allah also, when we're talking about the mahkamat, and we're talking about the mutashabihat. Well, muhkamat, hunna wadihat, fil ma'na. So when we talk about that which is muhkam, in the book of Allah, Azza wa Jal, we're talking about those verses which are clear in their meaning. And again, we gave a, uh, an example. Waqimu salat. Allah says establish a salat. We don't have to speculate what salat is, although it might have a linguistic meaning, which differs, but we don't really have to speculate. The ummah knows. Any, the most jahil person who even makes tawaf around a grave, wa'iyadim billah, he knows what it means to make salat. He knows the meaning. If I say, you need to pray, he knows. He's not going to say, wow, is that, which one is that? That's fasting or is it praying? Uh, you know, is that washing my head? You know, what should I? No, he knows what salat is. Okay. And it's clear. The the, the ma'na is, is so clear. This is so important. And it has a lot of relevance for us. So when we talk about the mutashabihat, you know, that which is maybe ambiguous, meaning open to many uh, meanings, the, an accurate definition of that, bi'idnillah ta'ala, is that it is what requires, uh, it, it, it is that which is necessary to return it to that which is muhkam. To it, to clarify it, <clears throat> to clarify its meaning. So, meaning it, re for example, when you have nasus, and this is relevant to our discussion in that we have text. For example, even this issue, what is? Uh, it's very clear that we have to obey. You know, Allah said, "Obey him and obey his message and, and those charged in authority uh, from amongst you." So we don't need to really look beyond that. <laughs> That's clear. I think we can all agree that, yeah, that's what we were supposed to do. We're supposed to obey them. And then we know that from that, you know, and from the faham of the ulama and from other nasus, that that is restricted. But we know that it's restricted because we've returned that now to other nasus, which clarified it. So nasus, they explain other nasus, meaning divine texts explain other divine texts. If something is general, it is it can be made... Uh, it, maybe it's uh, specified and restricted, made restrictive or, or conditional from other text. And if we look at this issue of rebelling against the leader, which is very clear, and the scholars mention it as an asl min usula ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, it's clear. So that means you have to search and run and hide and jump over fences and look and grab Athar here and Athar here from the Salaf in order to try to legitimize your wanting to rebel against a wicked leader. And then you giving it such a level, you know, all these other tafsilat, which some of the ulama, we got to give you credit. 
some of the ulama they did in the past. And we have examples, yes, of the Salaf, meaning the Tabi'in and, and those some of those later generations who rebelled. We have examples of great Imams of Islam. But that doesn't mean it's correct. Because it's not Dalia. And as Hassan al Basri mentioned and many others, it would have been better, you know, he mentioned about some of the you know, I didn't see any good in them ever. You know, some of the people wanted to make khuruj. And they did, and they were killed. That it's still better, it's better to be patient. It's better to be patient. And that goes in accordance with the nasus. That's what we're concerned with. Not really get into a lot of philosophical debates and stuff. So I hope if you want to turn it off from here, you can in order to uh, preserve your time. And there are so many ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa la alihi wa sallam. For example, <clears throat> the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a rule of the Muslims is a shield for them. They fight behind him and they are protected by him. If he enjoins enjoins fear of Allah, the exalted, the glorious, and dispenses justice, there will be a reward for him. And if he enjoins otherwise, he will receive its consequences. He will receive its consequences. And it's not your sword. And more importantly, the Prophet ﷺ said, no obedience is due when it involves disobeying Allah. Obedience is only in what Allah loves and all that Islam contains. And that shows us that those in the sus that we talked about, about obeying the ruler is muqayyid. It's restricted. because we are, And we have to return that those in the sus to this tafsilat, these uh, details. So that way we know the meaning for that. That we know, oh yeah, okay. So we can't obey the, the ruler if he says, you have to take an interest loan. You have to drink some wine. You have to do this. We can't do that because that's disobeying, that's, uh, you know, uh, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in that, we don't obey him. And even if the Muslim ruler has open sins, he should not be fought. One of the companions of Allah Ta'ala asked the Prophet ﷺ if they should fight the sinful, oppressive leaders. This is our mess right here. This is a beautiful thing. We don't have to really ask for fatwa after that. It's Mansus. There's a text. Why? What should we do if it's a rebellious leader? That means he's he's oppressing us. He's stealing our money. He's beating our backs. He's killing us. He's doing a Bashar al-Assad or a, 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 what's it, Saddam Hussein. He's doing all this, a Qaddafi on us. And worse than him and, and other than them. He's imprisoning our scholars. He's, 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 he's. What should we do? Okay. <laughs> the Sahabi, radiallahu ta'ala, one of the companions asked the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, should they fight the oppressive leaders by the sword? Violence. He replied, la, no. As long as they observe prayers. So it gives you the conditions. Why can't you go to his conditions? He's your Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not Imam so-and-so and Imam so-and-so. Even if they have fadl, even if they're known for adhering to the sunnah, as Imam Malik said, kulu yukhti wa yusib illa sahib. Everyone makes mistakes and it gets things correct, except the inhabitant, an inhabitant of that grave, meaning the grave of the Prophet. So our Prophet said, No, as long as they observe the prayers, and if you notice your rulers doing a hateful thing, hate what they do, but never quit obeying them. SubhanAllah. Do you need anything after that? I, I don't understand why we need anything after that. I was just so surprised when I was coming across these Nasus. And talking about what Faisal was talking about and Abu Hamza and, and others, Abu Qatad and all these other takfiris, takfiri ideologues in the West. What do we need to... I, it, it, the Nasus kept slapping me in the face every time I read something that they were saying. Faisal says, go to the Buckingham Palace. You can kill the Munafik even if he flees in there, right there. And, and you know, this one says this. And Abu Hamza gives us all these uh, evidence. He didn't give me anything from the book and anything from the Sunnah, but he said... Some of the tabi'in, they did this, some of this and this, and that. That's not Dalil. Give me some Dalil. Abu Hamza, come on, man. Give me some Dalil. No, Abu Hamza couldn't do that. Neither can you. Give me something from the book and the sunnah. So then I can feel comfortable. So I can practice. Because that's the nasus. That's what we go by. That's the master of your religion. Subhanallah. I, I, it's, it's gharib. Do we need to read the Athar again? Do we need to go to the Arabic or something? Because I don't know what if that's going to make your heart feel more comfortable. Stop. Be quiet. Stop. You're only digging a grave for yourself. You're digging a grave for yourself. A grave of Dalal and Bid'ah. 
Because you won't be able, you'll be drowning in bid'ah. Every time you try to come up, bid'ah is going to keep making you slip right back and down in the grave because you're letting your desires, your whims are leading you. You're not going back to the book and the sunnah, what you're ordered to do. Subhanallah. Go back to kitab and sunnah. Stop. Imam Ahmed said, and this is this isn't about, we haven't even got to the issue of the leader. I, I, I'm sorry, it's going to be long. He said, Usul al-Sunnah endana tamasik bima kana alayhi ashaba Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa iktida bihim wa tark al-bida wa kulu bidatin fahiyya dalal. Okay? Imam Ahmed, so this is to give us the tasawwur of how the Salaf were. This was their madhab. This is their minhaj. This means this is what was codified. This is what was established. They get, they It became uh, agreed upon. So meaning some of these masail, because they were kind of new issues, even though they had nasus, they were, when when you had these rebellions, that they the, the, the issue for some was not clear. But as the Prophet Sallallahu said, إِنَّ الْحَلَالَ بَيْنَ وَإِنَّ الْحَرَامَ بَيْنَ وَبَيْنَهُمْ أَمُورَ مُشْتَبِهَا لَا يَعْلَمُ هُنَا كَثِيرَ مِنَ النَّاسِ The Prophet Sallallahu said, the halal is clear, the haram is clear, and between them is issues which uh, are unclear. And what did he say after that, which is so beautiful and relevant to what we're talking about? لَا يَعْلَمُ هُنَا كَثِيرَ مِنَ النَّاسِ He said, and not many of the people know. They don't know the hukum. Meaning that there are some who know the hukum. So meaning there was plenty of the salaf who they were not. The ma'jama salaf, aglaba salaf, most of the salaf were definitely far ba'id and were clear on that. But some, some were unclear. They made khuruj. You know, because that's a big thing. If someone's beating my back, slaughtering, you know, oppressing, you know, it's going to be hard. It's going to be very difficult to, to say, well, hear and obey the leader. And it doesn't, that doesn't negate that you have a right to uh, gain your rights. But it's when you take these other nusus, okay, and I, I heard the, the young man made uh, the uh, mention in the istidlal for his khuruj by, you know, that you, you know, the one who defends his property is shaheed. Had a nas sahih. But had a istidlal sahih. Is that a appropriate application of the text that is sound that you can now rebel against the leader because he's just went too far you know if you kill a hundred people it's okay but once you kill 101 now you can rebel where do you get this qiyud where is your your evidence for restricting those divine texts and when when can you break from that divine text where do you get that from We need to know that. You got some answers and some explaining to do. Imam Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala an Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam aqal Attabi'u wa la tabtadi'u faqad kafaytum Subhanallah. Wallahi, that's minhaj. That's the minhaj of the salaf right there. Listen to that. That's beautiful. He radiallahu ta'ala who said, He said, follow. Subhanallah. Follow. Follow what? Follow the book and the sunnah. Do not innovate. You don't need to go outside of that after that. Just follow the book and the sunnah. Stop. Fakad kafaytum. Because that's sufficient for you. Wallahi, that right there is minhajiyya. Limadha. Because right there, that lays the foundation for all these issues of bid'ah. Look at this. Why do we have to have long drawn out debates with the Asharis? We just say, subhanAllah. Ar-Rahman sal ar-Rahman ala arsh istawa. Khalas. That's what we say. What do they got to say? Oh, and, and then we say, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah says, Ar Rahman al Ash Sistoa. In a way that suits His Majesty. Okay, we might clarify like that because uh, so that way only as a response to them. But before it didn't need to be a response. The Sahaba didn't need to make a response to Tabi'in with Tabi'at Tabi'in. They didn't need to go into those issues. But the later generations and the people of Bid'ah and philosophy, they introduced new things, new speculations. Well, if you say he rose above the throne, you've made Tashbi, made resemblance between the creation and, and, and others because you rise up out of your chair. No. 
We said it. So then Ahl Sunnah responds says, no, in a manner that suits his majesty. Meaning we don't know the cave. And then we go back to the effort of Imam Malik. What is he saying? He said, Al-Istawa, it's known. And the how is unknown, majhul. And asking about is a bidah. Subhanallah. Just stick with the, nas the nasus. That's what the point of these athar are, is sticking with the divine text. And that should suffice you. If you stuck with the usul of Ahl Sunnah, wa jama'ah, wa Ahl Sunnah, Qadimin, wa hadithin, <laughs> are in agreement with, even if you had some, and so many a'immat al-sunnah, naql ijma'an hadha, so many of them, they said it's an ijma' on this, you would be safe from the books you, you could return to. So I don't know, because you don't want to take from modern scholars, maybe they're too influenced by their leaders, is what you say. Just... It, this is exactly what the, the um, Sururi say and exactly what the other Qutubas say. And this is exactly what a lot of the Tekfiri say. So maybe you're not a card-carrying member, but you were so affected by a lot of these manahij. You need to go back to the Book of the Sun. You need to just sit with some scholars. I don't know. Maybe you did. I don't even know this guy. But it was, it was brought to me. So I felt I had to at least try to address it to the best of my simple, weak ability. But I couldn't let it slide. I couldn't. Just go back. What did he say? Follow. Don't innovate. Because they sufficed you. Or that will suffice you. That goes along with the Nasus. That's why we love... When we look at Athar of the Salaf... This is another point. We're talking about Athar of the Salaf, or you could say some of the Salaf did such and such, or so, so and so from the Salaf. That is not Dalil. And we've seen people who tried to misuse and abuse even Athar of the Salaf to do their thing. So you could take a, on the issue of Hajar without looking at all the nuances. You could say, oh, look how some of the Salaf, they made Hajar of Ahl Bidah. So then every time someone disagrees with you, or every time you think that someone has made a bid'ah, or every time someone has made a bid'ah, you make hajr. That's your first line of defense. No, there's so many nuances. There's so much contextualization that has to be put in place. And there's other athar of the salaf. And we know that that's the asa, but there we have, we have those nuances. That takes alm and thiq. Atalab al seek knowledge. Imam al alqai al alqai he said, Rahimullah ta'ala, falam najid fi kitabi la wa sunnat al rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam athar wa athar sahabatuhu illa hath ala ittiba' wa dhimma takalluf wa ikhtira' faman aktasara ala hadhi al athar kana min al mutabi'ina wa kana awlahum bi hadha al ism, meaning the ism of ahl sunnati wa jama'ah. So he's talking about ahl sunnah. That we don't find in the book of Allah, in the sunnah of the messenger of Allah, and in the ethar of the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and that was the point of mission to that nas, because he said kitab, wa sunnah, and he went to the asl of the salaf, the ru'us salaf, which is the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and ajma'in. Do you see that from the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and ajma'in? And especially what they had consensus on, what they were, you know, and they were upon? So hopefully this far it's become clear what the Qur'an and the Sunnah say regarding this issue and what some of the Salaf uh, mention uh, to give us an, an understanding. And the many Qutub al-Itaqad, for example, Shara Sunnah uh, Barbahari, Shara Sunnah Limam Muzani, okay, both different madhabs, Shafi'i and Hanbali, uh, Aqidata Atahawiya, Hanafi, uh, you know, we can find the variant madhabs in the Ayyamat al-Sunnah. Uh, Imam al al qai Usul al-Itaqad, um, uh, Imam Khalal, al-Sunnah lil Khalal. I mean, there's so many countless books of Aqidah that contradict what this individual and other individuals like him are saying. It's just It just blows my mind that we need to have to go back and almost take 
views that are what you could almost say shad or you know they're they're very strange uh viewpoints and opinions i don't want to call them shad i'd rather prefer that the ulama mention that but they are very harib and very strange to to go on especially now 1400 years later after akhasun has been writing it for about it for thousands of years all these books you can't hardly i don't think you can find a book of i've never i can't say that i've seen a book of Ahlul Sunnah that doesn't deal with this mas'ala and, and say it very clearly that we obey the Muslim leader and jihad behind the Muslim leader and hajj behind the Muslim leader, the al-albir, al-bar, uh, al-bir wa al fajr the righteous one and the disobedient one. Go to those books. It's there. It's just, it's so many. And what it shows us is it shows that this, that's codified, that now it's been... Um, Agreed upon, and it is an asl min usul Why do you, even the more contemporary Imam um, Ibn Al Qayyim, Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, Subhanallah, even you, I'm sure you'll find this in Imam Al Ghazali and others' books, even books of Imams that were had their tasawwuf and had their other issues. Even. I, 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 I dare say even Ashadis and others that in general, you'll find this in their, their books. That this was an issue, especially Ahlul Sunnah. This is from the Usul Al-Tiqada Ahlul Sunnah. So why would you even bring up something for the Awam? Because they don't know how to deal with this stuff. Just the fact that you brought that up and then you make Akhta with it. Don't do it. Stop. <sighs> Al Hafiz ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala he said wa amma sam'i wa ta'a lil walat al umur walat al umur al muslimin fa fiha sa'adatu al dunya wa biha tantadhimu musali al ibad fi al ma'ayshihim wa biha yasta'inun ala idhhar dinihim wa ta'at rabbihim كما قال علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه إن الناس لا يصلحهم إلا إمام بر أو فاجر إن كان فاجر عبد المؤمن فيه ربه وحمل الفاجر فيها إلى أجله إلى أجله uh, and that's only part of the state of, of Ibn uh, Rajab. But he says, as for hearing and obeying the leader of the Muslims, then this, and this is what you find in the books of the Salaf and why the scholars of Ahl Sunnah even now use these same arguments. They go to the those who preceded them. Men who, who preceded you in that your statements? So the Imams, they had a presence. They had a silsila going back to the Prophet وسلم, about this. But he said... As for obedience, hearing and obeying the Muslim uh, authority, that in that is the uh, is the happiness in the dunya, because this is your security, okay? And also the organization of the uh, the musale, the 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 even your risk. This can include your your wealth and your and 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 the 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 benefits and the the good of the society. You know, you know, things need to be organized in your society with regards to their living. And also by hearing and obeying that this allows for the propagation of the deen, meaning the signs of the religion can be exalted. They can be open. They become open. For example, look at Saudi Arabia. Let's go off the nest and look at what Saudi Arabia because they and in most of the uh, all the Muslim countries, they you hear the adhan even if though some of them don't really establish the salat, but they you, at least you hear the adhan. Okay, so those that would only come mostly in a Muslim land and by the security of the leader, you know, allowing that and 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 propagating that, establishing the prayer, the adhan, uh, organizing the Hajj. Uh, all of the all of the amur giving you peace and security so you can make hajj 
and all the other affairs that you know it's 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 organized through the obedience to the Muslim reader. Now, if we were to listen to the Tekfiris or as some of you want to talk about the Bogat or any anyone who's rebelling and causing Thora and things like this, and their arguments for regard without going to their arguments, but if we were to listen to their conclusion, rebellion, this and that and the other, it's not good enough. Let's overtake this. Our leaders are in prison. Our scholars are this and that and blah, 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 on, on and on and on. You would have nothing but folda. You wouldn't even have the peace and security to seek knowledge to do just to live, to go earn your living if it, you're going to those countries to live and stuff like this. Every time, subhanAllah, look at this so-called Arab Spring and otherwise. Tell me any of those countries that really have come out in a beneficial way after all of that rebellion. Some of them, they still can't begin to breathe and have a normal life. So look at Syria. What a travesty. Look at um, Yemen. Okay. And of course, there's other issues going on there. There's other conflicts. It's a plethora of conflicts, especially in, in Yemen and a plethora of parties. The point is, how did they all start? And what, you know, it was all by being dissatisfied with the leader, which rightfully they had rights to. But it's how they articulated that. And then to go against rebelling against um, against the authority, okay? Now, Bashar al-Assad, okay, Kafir, no problem, and, and others. But they didn't have the Qudra, they didn't have the ability. So this is not even, he's not even, he's outside of the fold of our discussion when we talk about those who are not in the fold of Islam. But we're talking, but, and so that even that shows us that in general, that is not the way to establish Khair, peace and security. And so this is some of the things that Imam Raj, Ibn Rajab is kind of making an ishara to. And there's so many ulama in the past, the fuqaha, who explain this and give you much better details. But again, we don't want to grow this bigger than it already is. So then he said, uh, and they said, regardless of whether the imam is righteous or wicked. And he said, and if he is wicked, then the mu'min, the believer, worships Allah. They just keep worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal, worship their love, their Lord, Rabbu. And then and they uh they are patient and deal with the oppression, meaning they're patient with it until they die. So supplicating to Allah, because Allah can lift everything. Don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this in these equations. And the Prophet mentioned a dua, a dua, a dua a mazloom mustajab. The dua of the, the supplication of the one who is oppressed is answered. So it's very important. This is a menhaj thing. This is a methodological issue. That's why those who go against this methodological issue, then either they have left the meth the methodology, meaning the methab of the salaf, or the menhaj of the salaf, or they have made a mistake in this mas'ala, but it's such an important it's so important because it's in those books. It's as if the person didn't read the books and they just went around and picked and choose from other, they looked at all the istithna. You don't look, you go to the asal of the mas'ala. You go into that mas'ala and you deal with those issues, but you don't go to the exceptions. That's okay for the person, the talib al-ilm and the one who has knowledge or what have you to look in that for the sake of bah. But then for you to conclude and negate all of the scholarship of the contemporary imams. Who are you? I can honestly say, I don't even know you. Who are you to Imam al-Albani? Can you even clean his finger? Could you have cleaned his fingernails when he was living? Probably not when it comes to knowledge. Now that's an expression, but I don't think so. There's not that many people, I'm talking about even on that level, you know, especially in the West. So subhanAllah, why not keep silent? So in some, uh, in regards to that issue, and again, like I feel, I don't feel that I was able to give this justice at all. You know, it really, I don't have my books to really go into these Messiah and they really need writing. It really needs to be like a real, uh, really going into the issue. But hopefully it, it be, at least became clear what really the Medheb of the Salaf is. And that was the Ghaya, that was the intent. And what I've noticed also, I see because uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Qadi, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in him. 
Uh, I see in his evolution in Aqidah and evolution in Minhaj, no doubt in Minhaj, uh, his Aqidah, he still refers to him as Ahl Athar. I don't know what that, or uh, Athadi and Creed. I don't know how you're Athadi and Creed, but not Athadi and Minhaj. I'm not really sure how that works. But for the sake of uh, semantics and, and kind of looking at that, maybe there's a wedge that someone could be uh, a Mubtadiyah, but they have general uh, Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah in some things. You know, al asmai wa sifat and other things in the usul of uh, iman and things like this, but yet they just deviate with major masail. But no one, but you wouldn't say he's athari mubtadiyah. He's he's mubtadiyah. Khalas, he's a mubtadiyah. He innovated in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He yakhraj an al an al madhab, an al minhaj. He left the minhaj. And this seems to be what is the situation with our. Dear brethren, we hope that he can find light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because really, I, I, honestly, it's it's light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hidayah, this is just, that's nur from Allah. I'm not saying that we, but I'm just thankful to be, have been in, introduced to the madhab of the salaf. And really, the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, I'm so grateful to them. And to have met imams like Imam Mukbil, because you just saw how he was like a, in you know, he... Uh, just embodied, he just practiced Islam. You know, he believed and he was fervent on the sunnah. And a famous statement of his, which is really sums up really the um, the the menhaj of Ahl sunnah. He said, Dawah to Ahl sunnah, Dawah to min kitabi la ila kitabi la wa min sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam ila sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. He said, the Dawah of Ahl sunnah is a Dawah from the book of Allah, meaning the Quran, to what? To the Quran. And from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Had the doubt to Ahl sunnah. So that symbolizes the, you know, right there, that encapsulate, encap, encapsulates the method of the Salaf. Da'wah to Ahl sunnah. Go back to the book in the sunnah. And make sure your call is to the book and the sunnah, not you and your group and your clique and your friends. And make sure it's not your whims. Kitab wa sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. The last issue of I want to address because I, uh, like I said, I had some discussions with some people, some sheikhs and others in America, in the West, about this issue and their claim. And it really shocks me when these things come out, but I honestly, I, I just feel like, I, I don't know. So I am giving you a little bit of my feelings and my opinion, but it's just, it's an assessment after looking at some of these issues for so many years. But I just really honestly feel there's a lot, you know, you see a lot of the mistakes that we see in menhaj and stuff like that. I just, I really believe it's a naqs in ilm, meaning someone could be really grounded in the language. They could have really grounded in thick. You know, because a lot of people, depending on where you go to study, you emphasize things. When you go to Saudi Arabia, especially, and Yemen as well, but I, I think Saudi is on a, still on another level, Akita is is really, there's just no room for, you know, you know that's everywhere you go, they're teaching you Akita. You know, and it, you're really going into a lot of Messiah and issues and, and the books, and the books of the Salaf, and you're reviving the Salaf, and you're going to the... To those things which, which uh, you know, to deal with a lot of these messiah, you're really getting, you know, that majmul etikara ahl sunnah. You're studying the general principles of ahl sunnah in so many messiah that you'll find. For example, when I mentioned that, we're talking about those books, and then I, I, I guess I'm going to make a plug for Athadi Institute. Those are some of the things we're going to study uh, books that are especially about certain things. For for example, books that might emphasize al asmai wa sifat, or books that emphasize tawheed in general, or books that emphasize. Um, or books that emphasize, you know, issues of Iman, because this is how the Salaf were, depending on the, the issues and the time when they were writing and what they had to deal with as far as clarifying the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah and dealing with Ahl Bida and, re and rebuking them and refuting them. They wrote their treatises based on that. So if there was issues of Irja and issues of the Khwarij, you know, they would write books about Iman, like some of the earlies, like... Uh, 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 Al-Iman, Shara... Uh, you know, some of those early uh, texts about uh, Iman. And then 
you know, if they were dealing with the Shabahat of al Asma'i wa Sifat, they wrote about that. You know, Ibn Khuzayma's Kitab al Tawheed, when he talked about Tawheed, it's talking about al Asma'i wa Sifat. And when you look at other books like Aqidat al Tahawiyah and other books, you know, you're getting a more, uh, you're dealing with Tawheed from, uh, you know, you're getting al Asma'i wa Sifat and you're getting uh, also uh, Tawheed um, uh, al Ibadah. Okay, you're getting some Tawheed al Ibad as well. And of course, Rububiyah is implied there as well, obviously. And you see Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, his book is Mujmil as well, meaning it deals with many Messiah, the foundation of Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah. For example, the way Ahl Sunnah believes about Iman, the way Ahl Sunnah believes about the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way, uh, the way Ahl Sunnah believes about the Sahaba, the way Ahl Sunnah believes about uh, takfir, the way Ahl Sunnah believes about the uh, obedience to the Muslim authorities. Okay, And so you'll find those, those different texts that Ahl Sunnah, they, they wrote. So moving back to this, this issue that we want to talk about very quickly, this last issue, and this is the claim that uh, Muhammad al have because this is what Dr. Qadi says, uh, and this is what this youngster is kind of saying or says. And this is what others are saying. And what's unfortunate, you can see, I'm, I'm going to mention this, that you see in the edit, you know, knowledge, it comes, manners do come with knowledge. And, and that's a shortcoming that we have in others and because of our shortcomings in knowledge. But you see this a lot when people, they run out of things to say, so then they have to belittle people. For example, a person will start talking and he'll say, and whoever, you know, they'll come to the end of their statement and they'll say, if you degree, you're just a stupid idiot and this and that and the other. You know, these idiots who defend Muhammad al Dua, these idiots who disagree with my assessment on ISIS. Well, men sabakabeha the kol. Who preceded you in that kol except for the the uh, progressives and the modernists and the disbelievers? So you're in the menhaj of the, uh, of the kuffar and the mulhiddin, okay? Ahl ilhad, you're on their menhaj. Is that what it is? Because no one from Ahl Sunnah agrees with you. In this, that is so that shows the that it's illogical what your your conclusions. Your conclusions are the exact opposite assessment of what the scholars of Ahl Sunnah from Algeria to uh, Jordan to uh, Yemen to Syria to Saudi Arabia to Kuwait to Somalia to Ethiopia to Indonesia. And honestly, most of those, if I haven't listened or read books from scholars in all those places, in Egypt as well. Many of those places I've either met or studied with scholars from all those places. So I've heard from them and I know what their itikad is and we see that this is codified in the text. Anyhow, the issue isn't really, you know, the scholars have extensively written books refuting this shubha. And it's just amazing some guy in the West would come up with this, sort of. But again, I, I believe it shows a lack of knowledge in those issues. And to claim that Imam Muhammad of the Wahhab, now no doubt ISIS did, uh, that was some of their source text. They really extensively quoted from uh, Muhammad of the Wahhab and from uh, the Emma. Uh, Emmet Dao, what's known as the Emmet Dao, meaning his uh, successors, up until you know Ben Baz or something like this, Rahim al Jamian. and our Sheikh Abu Salah al Afghani, he wrote his his PhD is a volume this big, refuting that, dealing with those doubts. I have it in my mektaba when I'm far from my mektaba, unfortunately, but again shows that these are issues of research, but. In short, because I dealt with this in my PhD as well, which I said will be published hopefully soon, very soon, bi'idnillah ta'ala. And what I found in my research is that no doubt they extensively quote from our sources and where they differ. This is where they differ with Al-Qaeda. Okay, Al-Qaeda were tekfiris. They're both tekfiris. Al-Qaeda is more kutubis. These guys, uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi and his other crew, you know, especially those people who are supposed to be scholars amongst them, who, who fit, subhanAllah, they fit perfectly the, the sifat of the Khwarij, being young in age. And, you know, they just built them up as sheikh because they have muafaka with them. You know, they, they were, maybe some of them studied something or whatever, but they graduated from kulia sharia somewhere, or this and that and the other. They had agreements with their tekfiri ideology, so they're sheikh, alama. 
but you don't see any <laughs> scholars that are known from Ahl Sunnah from amongst their ranks and supporting those people. And so you see that they quoted extensively from Muhammad of the Wahhab, where's the, the uh, Al-Qaeda and perhaps Boko Haram, uh, uh, not not Boko Haram, maybe so much. Uh, Allahu Alam, I'm not really as familiar with their text and stuff, but I, I think they were kind of a branch, somewhat more Al Qaeda. You know, they were pre ISIS, but then they also kind of, I think they made bayah to them. And Shabab also, you know, they had more of a Qutbis orientation, and that's why those guys fight each other and make takfir ba'dum min ba'd, like the original Khwarij. They make takfir of each other. You differ with us. This is one of their conditions for tekfir. Oh, you differ with us? And this is what the Azarika, some of the original Khawarij, were upon that as well. So anyhow, you see that uh, ISIS did extensively uh, quote from Muhammad of the Wahhab. And, and other classical texts they took as fatawa. And one of the biggest issues with them was their contextualization. That they didn't contextualize anything. You know, they would just take these fatwa and they apply it to whatever they thought was, you know, it's just so much chaos and, and really their reasoning. And they are a they are a product of their political time. So basically, they took a lot of those texts out of context. Whereas uh, Muhammad, Imam Muhammad of the Wahhab and others, of course, takfir is from the religion of Islam. No one deny well. You know, even the Sufis, you know, they're, they're scholars and the scholarships of the path, the scholars of the path, whether they were Maturidiyya, whether they're Ashari or what have you, they all believe in Tikfir. They know that that's a principle of, of the religion, you know, <laughs> but they, uh, and, and they, you know, had principles, uh, 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 you know, uh, those principles and those usul that, uh, and the criterion for Tikfir in place. So what you see is you see a violation anyhow. They did use his source text a lot, okay? But it's their conclusion. It's according to their explanation, according to their whims. You, you see just so many contradictions. They were so hardcore that sometimes that even they killed, this is all documented. And a lot of this I did research in their magazines. I went to their websites, spent a lot of time, hours and hours and hours of study on their websites. Hours and hours, I still have many of their magazines. I, I, I collected that stuff. I watched their videos, watched their, their slaughtering of people in Yemen and their slaughtering of people in Syria. You know, we have some murtadin. You wouldn't let them make toba. You just shot their heads off, you know. And, uh, you know, we, we, we saw those, their propaganda machine, which was intense. But the point is, is that they took so much of his stuff out of context and just, boom, you know, they were extremely literal and uh, no doubt Ahl Sunnah looks at the text, the Asl is in a literal fashion, but we look at the Illa as well. We look at the reason behind the text and the, and we also look at the, uh, you know, it's not to the extreme of the Zahiriya and so forth, and where you found some of this elements uh, in the ISIS. But they were just really, Tajawaz al Had, really, they just took those texts. You know, they would quote from those texts extensively, but take it to a whole different uh, illogical conclusion of how, of, you know, for them, you know, basically they considered themselves the only legitimate authority. They made take fear of the Taliban. They made take fear of all those and kill them and even kill them now. ISIS and the Taliban fight in, uh, in uh, Afghanistan. And they had their own contradictions with the Rafida, you know, they worked and they benefited from the Rafida Shia, and I'm not going to go into that because those are also kind of outside of the scope of what we're talking about, but it's, I've detailed some of that in my PhD. And, you know, they were opportunist. You didn't see them attacking the Yahud. But the point is, is that the bottom line is they took so much out of context. And all the groups, no one would even listen to any of the groups, the grave worshippers, for example, if they didn't quote from at least the Quran and at least fabricated hadith or even authentic hadith as well. You know, no one as a, a Muslim generally, except for now in these contemporary times of the Quran, Yun and the modernists and stuff like this, but mostly everyone is going to give you some sort of text, but it's how they expound upon it. It's their their decontextualization and not putting it in its proper context. And it's also how they make their ahkam 
you know, and their, their fatawa from those same texts. And even if they take some things from Ahl Sunnah, but it's how they they make their their conclusion in their extremism. So I think that's about the best that I can say without really going into details and looking at Masail and stuff like this. And again, for more details, await for my PhD, Bidnillah Ta'ala, which will be out, Bidnillah Ta'ala, soon. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from Kulisu wa Makru. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was surely for myself and the Shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and our many uh, mistakes. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.